I apologize for my voice again. I've still got bronchitis, but I'm slowly getting better. I consider myself a beginner when it comes to painting portraits and the figure. I could count the amount of portraits that I've painted on one hand, but I'm determined to get better at it. So every now and then when I have time, I'll challenge myself and I'll step out of my comfort zone. In this video, I will share my process for painting this watercolor painting of my son. This is a painting of my younger son who is now a grown man and is sitting behind the camera here wishing that I'd get on with it. I painted this from a photograph that I took of him about 20 years ago. He had just woken up and I was trying to get him to eat his breakfast before school. He was sitting at a table with the sun coming in and I loved the way the sunlight was creating all those beautiful cast shadows on his face. I had my camera nearby, so I grabbed it and I took a quick photo, not knowing that 20 odd years later that I would paint from it. Because I'm new to painting portraits, I used a limited palette to keep things simple for myself and to lessen the possibility of muddying my paint mixes. I wanted to limit my choices so that I could focus on tone and shape. I'll tell you the four colors that I used a little later. I'm really not confident painting hair for some reason, mainly because I haven't done it enough. I always get lost in the detail and I end up overworking it. I'm torn between keeping it simple or trying to make it look a bit more realistic. It's an area that I struggle with and I know I need to keep practicing. For the hair, I experimented with two Chinese brushes that I bought years ago and I've never used. I was watching a video of another portrait painter who does amazing work and she used a Chinese brush similar to these for the hair. So I thought I'd try it too and maybe I'll have some success. So you'll see me using these brushes. I also tried out this new brush that I bought recently. It's a Bocciano Benazi Unico Infinito round brush. That's a mouthful. It has extraordinary softness and absorption of the hydrofiber, slow and smooth water release. The tip follows the changing pressure of the brush stroke while maintaining wide color autonomy. Sounds impressive. This brush is really long and it has a super fine point when it's wet. So you'll see me using it when I paint the hair. I painted on Fabriano Artistico soft press paper. Soft press paper is smoother than cold press paper, but it has a slight texture, so it's not as smooth as hot press paper. If you've been watching this channel, you'll know that it's a paper that I enjoy painting on. Before I show you my painting demonstration, I must thank Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes for anyone who loves learning new skills. I joined about seven years ago and I'll often sit down after my work is finished for the day and I'll watch a class or two to relax. One painting class that I particularly love is this one by Laurieann Gonzalez called Acrylic Painting, Learn the Basics for Beginners. I used to paint in acrylic paint years ago and the information in this class is spot on. Laurieann takes you through everything you need to know about starting to paint in acrylic. There are so many different classes you can take on Skillshare on hundreds of topics from painting and watercolor to photography to learning how to look after houseplants. The classes on Skillshare are ad free so you can stay in the zone while you're exploring new skills. New premium classes are launched each week and the entire catalog is available with subtitles in Spanish, French, Portuguese and German. If you'd like to explore the site the first 1,000 people to use the link in my description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. So go and have a look and start learning some new skills. All right, back to this painting. I already told you about the paper and some of the brushes I used. The colors I used were burnt sienna, 
French Ultramarine, Permanent Rose and some Windsor Lemon to create the green for his pyjama top. I started with the hair because I knew that would be the part that I would struggle with the most and I wanted to get it out of the way. I mixed some French Ultramarine into Burnt Sienna to make a colour that was similar to the lightest areas on his hair. And I tried to paint the brush strokes in the direction that the hair was falling. Once I got a layer of it down, I darkened my paint mixture with more pigment, less water, and I deepened the colour in some areas. I was getting a bit worried at this stage. I thought I might have covered over too many highlights and I was going a bit dark everywhere. But I persisted with it. I'm still using the same brush. I haven't changed brushes yet. Then I mixed an even darker colour from French Ultramarine and Burnt Sienna. I started to darken the darkest areas. Then I used my brush to try and take a bit of paint off here and there in the lighter areas. So I took the paint out of it and used it damp to try and scrape a bit of the paint off. I dried it off then with the hairdryer so that I could have a look at it and work out what I needed to do with it. And then I thought I'd try out the second Chinese brush that I had. I loaded it with the dark paint and I painted on dry paper again. I think I was trying to add a bit of detail here. I was determined not to fail because this is half a sheet of watercolour paper and I didn't want to waste it. I kept telling myself to have patience and to work through this ugly stage. Then I got my Bocciano Benazzi round brush out. It's got a really, really fine point. And I started to add a few more details with that. Still using the dark paint mixture of the two colours. It took a little while to get used to this brush because it's such a long brush. But it holds a lot of paint and water and it's got an extremely fine point. I was anxious that I had gone too dark everywhere, so I would use this brush just wet with water and I was able to create some highlights in the dark areas. So I painted the water over the top and then I used the paper towel to remove the pigment. Not only did that allow me to create some highlights, but it also allowed me to get the flow and the movement of the hair better. I use this brush to also paint a few stray hairs off the side of the head. I kept working on the hair until I was reasonably happy with it. And then I mixed some burnt sienna with some permanent rose. I thinned it with water so that it wasn't too dark. And I washed that all over the head and the hands. Then I looked at the shadow in the ear that extends down the side of his face and onto his neck and I thought I'd paint that in now. So I mixed the same colours that I washed all the skin in with, burnt sienna and permanent rose, but this time I used more pigment and a little less water. I was working from broad to specific. Rather than start to focus on detail, I'm looking for the large, broad shapes that I can paint in first. And this shadow was the most obvious place to start. The hand casts a shadow on the cheek, and that shadow has got a hard edge. So I painted this area here on dry paper. Up on the side of the face, though, you can see I've wet the paper there 
which has given me that soft edge that runs down the side of his face. I also took that colour down onto the hand as well. And I could see a bit of it under the hair here, so I painted some there as well. I dried that shadow off with the hairdryer and then I re-wet the side of the face here with some water. I needed to deepen the colour here beside the hand. I used the same colours, permanent rose mixed with burnt sienna, but again I used a bit more pigment this time. It looked a bit bright to me so I mixed a touch of French ultramarine into that mixture as well. I used that colour on the eyebrow area here. I've wet the paper where I'm painting now. Just to get a bit of colour there, there's a shadow. And then as it starts to dry, I'll add some more hair and make it look a bit more detailed there. I was using my number 7 round brush and now I've switched to my number 5. The paper here where I'm painting is dry. Just trying to get the shape of the eyebrow in there. I picked up a bit more burnt sienna. Once I got the shape of it in, then I wet my brush with some water and started to soften some of the edges of the marks I made. Here I've wet the paper again and I'm using the mixture of the three colours, French ultramarine, burnt sienna and permanent rose. Water lines were starting to form so I got my large flat brush and painted over the top to remove them. I painted a bit more colour onto the side of the head here. Then I went back to the neck and I deepened the colour there. This is a mixture of the three colours, burnt sienna, permanent rose and a tiny bit of French ultramarine in it. Then I started to paint all the shadows and shapes that I saw on the ear. Here I've got a mixture of burnt sienna and permanent rose but it's got more permanent rose in it. I paint it on and then I soften edges where I need to. There I've just wet the paper and I get a bit of the colour and run it along the edge of the ear so that it bleeds back. I wet the paper up the top here and then I put some of that colour in there and I allowed the paint to bleed over the paper. I didn't want a hard edge just there so I softened it with my brush and then got a bit more paint with more burnt sienna in it and I painted that on and then I softened that lower edge. I wet the side of the ear up higher and I ran some colour along the edge again and let it bleed. I did the same along the front of the ear, a bit of water and then some paint along the front edge. I didn't think of this as an ear as I was painting it. Instead it was a series of shapes all connected together. Some of the shapes had hard edges and some of them had soft edges. Some of them were darker than others. And all I did was try and paint what it was that I saw. I painted a few more hairs too on the side of their head. I mixed some permanent rose with French ultramarine, fairly dark, and I started to paint in the darkest area of the ear. Before that section dried I got a bit more pigment, slightly darker this time, a mixture of the two colours, permanent rose, French ultramarine, and I deepened the colour right inside the ear there. I 
I painted on a bit more burnt sienna as well. I just kept layering the paint until I was happy with it. I left the E then and I came over here to the eyebrow on this side and I started to paint that in. I used the hair colour here, that was the mixture of French ultramarine and burnt sienna. And I deepened the colour here at the top. And then I started to paint in this area over here where the eyebrow is. That lighter mixture was the mixture of the three colours, French ultramarine, burnt sienna and permanent rose. And now I've gone back to the hair colour. I could see some pale shadows or wrinkles on his forehead. So I wet that area with some water and I painted on some of the lighter shadow mixture where I saw it. And I left that area to dry when I was happy with it. Just taking off a bit of paint there. I painted in the nose that I could see. And this is the bottom lip. And now I'm starting to paint in the top lip. And again, I used a mixture of permanent rose and burnt sienna. But it's fairly watered down here. I could see some green reflected on the skin from his pyjama top. So I mixed some French ultramarine with Windsor lemon to make a dull green. And I painted that on where I saw it green on the reference photo. I also noticed that green on the bottom of the chin. So I painted that on there as well. And here I'm painting in the shadow that's underneath the nose. This is a mixture of permanent rose and French ultramarine. I increased the permanent rose in the mixture and I took it down onto the top lip. I couldn't see the edge of the top lip on the reference photo, so all I could do was paint what it was that I saw. One of the fingers casts a really dark shadow on the bottom lip. So I used the French ultramarine and permanent rose mixture to paint that in quite dark. The side of the cheek here also looked green to me. So I used my green mixture and I painted that colour there as well. There was a shadow on the side of the hand and arm. I painted that in with the permanent rose burnt sienna mixture on wet paper. And over the top of that, there was a darker cast shadow. This I painted with the mixture of permanent rose and French ultramarine. And again, down the bottom of the arm here, it was reflecting the green of his pyjama top. So I painted some green on down there. And that was all done on wet paper. When it dried, I could see it wasn't dark enough in the darkest areas. So I painted over the top on the dry paper with the same colour mixture. And I softened along the front edge of it just with the damp brush. With the fingers, I wet each finger individually 
and I ran a really pale mixture of the skin colour, permanent rose and burnt sienna along the edge, where I could see that it was a bit darker on the reference photo. They were quite washed out, the hands on the photo, because of the way I'd taken it, so there wasn't a lot of colour that I could include. I worked on the wet paper just to keep the paint edges soft. I made sure my pencil lines weren't too dark before I painted the colour in though. So there I'm wetting the side of the hand and then I run some colour down the front. And the variations in the tonal values were very subtle. There was a cast shadow in here where the thumb is, so I painted that in on dry paper with a mixture of permanent rose and burnt sienna. And then when that was dry, I came back and added detail in there. Here I'm looking carefully at the lines on the side of the thumb and I'm painting them in. Then I came back into this shadow area where the thumb is and I painted in the detail there using a mixture of permanent rose and French ultramarine. I added more colour to the fingers just on the edges. And then I went back to this area where the shadow is and I used my little zero brush to get right into the crevices with some dark paint. It's permanent rose and French ultramarine mixed together. And then some more colour on the tips of the fingers. I wet them first with water and then put the skin colour on there. And again I painted in cast shadows that I could see and then I deepened the colour where I could see it was darker. I used my little zero brush to get into those little nooks and crannies. And then the same thing on this other hand, some colour down the edges where I could see they were slightly darker. I did that on wet paper and then I started to see little lines and I painted those on as well. And I used the permanent rose French ultramarine mixture to paint in the cast shadows. When they dry, I deepened the colour where it was a bit darker. Here I'm softening the paint edge with my damp brush. I could see some creases on the palm, so I used the skin mixture on damp paper here with my zero brush. I came back into shadow areas and deepened the colour again. All the time I'm looking carefully at the reference photo and all I'm doing is painting what I see. On the fingernails I could see a little shadow on the left hand side, so I used the shadow mixture there. I softened paint edges when I needed to. Generally I worked on dry paper when I painted those in. And then I turned my attention to his pyjama top 
and the edge of the neckline here, I used French ultramarine. I mixed a bit of burnt sienna in it though, just so that it wasn't too bright. I made sure I kept using the same colours that I'd been using on the skin. I didn't want to introduce a new colour. This side here on the left is in shadow, so I gave it a second layer of the paint. And over here too, there's a shadow cast by that arm. So I gave that little section there a second layer. The rest of the top I washed in with a mixture of French ultramarine and Windsor lemon. I added some detail with my little zero brush on the neckline. And I mixed a darker green then, still using French ultramarine and Windsor lemon, but it's got more of the French ultramarine in it. And I painted in that cast shadow there. That was on dry paper. I took the paint out of my brush and I used my damp brush to soften those paint edges just there. And there was a cast shadow here on this shoulder as well, so I painted that same colour there too. I deepened some of the shadows and painted in some seams, just using the darker green mixture. Softened edges with my damp brush. I added a bit of detail over here on the blue area with my liner brush. Just using the blue mixture, but it's a bit darker. I put it on with my liner brush and then I used this larger brush to soften the paint edges a bit. When I finished the pyjama top, I got out a watercolour pencil. This is a Derwent watercolour pencil. The colour is flesh pink. And I used this to draw in a few little stray hairs here and there. Not too many, I didn't want to overdo it. This colour went quite well over the dark browns. I could see it. I wasn't going to activate it though, I was just going to leave it dry. When I was happy with it, I took the washi tape off and then I cut it off the board and there it is finished. What I learned from this painting is that I know I need a lot more practice painting people. I'm still not comfortable painting human hair and I'm going to need a lot of practice with that. I've learned that painting skin isn't as difficult as I thought. I don't need to get all worked up about the colours that I choose. I'm better just to keep my colour palette simple and look hard at the different tonal variations that I can see. There might be really dramatic tonal variations in the shadows, but other areas will have only really subtle tonal value changes. And the hue doesn't have to match what it is I'm looking at. It's the tonal value that requires more attention than that. Paint what I see, not what I think I see. And don't give up, persist. That's the key, I've got to persist. I hope this was useful to you. Thanks for watching. Please give this video a like and make sure you subscribe to my channel and I'll see you next week. I hope you'll be understa able to understand me. That's it, that's all you gotta say. But I'm lost where I'm, my train of thought. That's why you have a script. I can see that. I can see it in my. I could count the amount of portraits. It's, sorry, it's out of screen. And he's not. We're leaving that a bit in. What? And to lessen the possibility. Mainly because I. Oh, I've got the wrong brushes. Sorry. Just getting them. Just wait.
Valla gelim. İne ya.